Hello and good evening, everybody. Um, it is 7 o'clock p.m. I'm the Deputy Town Clerk, Amanda Kurtz. Before we get started, I have a few announcements. Tonight's regularly scheduled Herndon Town Council public hearing is a virtual meeting pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.23708.2 as amended, the Governor's Executive Orders as amended, and in accordance with Ordinance 20-0-23, Continuity of Governmental Operations During Pandemic Disaster COVID-19 as amended and readopted by the Herndon Town Council on September 8, 2020, which supersedes previously adopted amendments. Proper notice of the electronic meeting was provided in accordance with the Code of Virginia. Agenda and meeting materials, along with information for viewing the meeting and submitting comments for the record, are available on the town's website. The meeting will begin with a roll call to determine a quorum, and all votes, including adjournment, will be by roll call vote. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Amanda, and good evening, everyone. I'll call our October 27th Town Council meeting to order. Um, as the clerk calls attendance, please uh, state your name and that you are present for the record. So, Amanda, could you please call the roll? Town, Town Manager, excuse me. Now, Manager Belastion, present. Town Attorney? Yates, present. Olam? Olam present. Baker? Baker present. Delagula? Delagula present. DeCall? DeCall present. Friedrichs? Friedrichs present. McKenna? McKenna is present. Merkel? Merkel is present. Um, so for the record, we do have a quorum electronically. All members um, of council, I, I don't think I have to say this every time, uh, raise your hand so that I can call on you um, as we move through our agenda this evening. Uh, first up, we have two sets um, of minutes up for approval. Is there a motion to approve the October 6th work session minutes? McKenna so second. moved. Okay, McKenna. Is there a second? second, Signe. Discussion on the motion? Okay, um, seeing that, I will um, call the question and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Olam? Baker? Baker, yes. Delagula? Delagula, yes. DeCall? DeCall, yes. Friedrichs? Friedrichs, yes. McKenna? McKenna, yes. Merkel? Merkel, yes. So that motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the October 13th public hearing minutes? McKenna will make the motion. Oh, I'm second. Discussion on motion? Okay, yes. seeing none, I will uh, call the question and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Olam? Olam, yes. Baker? Baker, yes. Delagula? Delagula, yes. DeCall? DeCall, yes. Friedrichs? Friedrichs, yes. McKenna? McKenna, yes. Merkel? Merkel, yes. So that motion also carries. Um, we will start off with comments from our town manager, Mr. Ashton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as has been the custom since the beginning of COVID, my comments will be uh, mostly about COVID, and then I have a non-COVID related uh, item or two I want to share with you. Um, first off, although I uh, I missed the call with Dr. G on Friday, I would, had other commitments. Um, it seems like everything still in the county seems to be going well. Um, I'm awaiting the latest statistics to come in. They have not. They were not in my possession before this meeting. But again, I just want to remind everybody to mask up, social distance, wash your hands if sick, stay home. Um, if positive, definitely quarantine and answer the call from the health department are things I encourage everybody to do. And I can't encourage this enough. I was at a staff meeting with uh, a very socially distanced large staff meeting with Public Works this morning uh, where flu shots were again emphasized. I, I think everyone should go get their flu shot. Uh, all of the health um, people I've talked to are stressing this and can't stress it enough. And so I stress it for everybody to go seek flu shots. They are available at most pharmacies, Target, and various other places. Um, Halloween is coming up. Uh, this is going to be a different Halloween uh, than most. I encourage people to go to our website or follow us on social media to see what the guidance is on um, what is low, moderate, and high-risk activities for Halloween as parents are trying to make their decisions about their children. Um, so there's some information there. And again, this information is coming from state health through county health to us, and we repackaged it and put it out. So it's not just me sitting there making this up. This is coming from legitimate health care sources. 
Um, and finally with COVID is I've gotten a lot of inquiries about the restaurant um, sunset of the re outdoor seating is at the end of November. Uh, staff is acutely aware. Uh, we are working on some things right now, right? We're trying to work with the county past an, uh, an action, I wanna say last week, that talked about uh, outdoor seating, that talked about, um, the, it got the fire marshal involved to talk about heating those areas and various other things. We are working with our building official and zoning administrator to go through that and see what's applicable that could be used in the town. And we will be rolling that out later this month before the end of the November 30th. And very similarly lead to what we've done before, I will take the emergency powers that you've given me, I'll enact it, and then I'll ask for your uh, blessing in the, at the December meeting, so stand by for that. On non-COVID front, the much awaited uh, arduous process that, that we have been going through, that we've been working on even during COVID, but, but it only complicated the situation related to the heritage and soon to be historic district guidelines. Uh, the draft is done. Um, they're putting some final touches in terms of commas and, and making sure that um, subject verb agreement, you know, the normal editing stuff is happening now. Um, but we are looking to have a, a WebEx on Thursday night. The road, we have road signs out advertising it. We're advertising in all of, our, all of our channels as well. I suggest anybody that wants to go and attend this WebEx town hall event uh, where it will be presented and be an opportunity to discuss it. Um, go to our website for details on how to participate in that. Uh, we encourage um, we encourage everybody who's interested in the district to be involved in this. Um, again, this has been a long awaited uh, objective of council that unfortunately it took a little bit longer because of COVID, but, but now we have something that we can actually sink our teeth into and discuss. Um, so with that, that's all I have. Uh, unless there are any questions, Madam Mayor, I will give it back to you. Um, thank you. Are there any questions for the town manager before we move to comments? Ms. Friedrichs? Just the one, um, I mean, one of the things that made it so easy for us to um, make the changes for the restaurants um, mm -hmm. that are already in force was that it wasn't a safety issue, it was a, a logistics issue. Um, are we looking, it's hard for me to imagine that uh, something that's not legal right now per the fire marshal will be legal because, or safe, because we want it to be. As, uh, I mean, I assume we're not rel relaxing safety regulations when we consider re um, relaxing other regulations. No, and again, the fire marshal is our fire marshal. The fire marshal of the county is the town's fire marshal. So there's nothing that we would do that would supersede what he would allow, uh, what his office would allow. Um, the fire marshal is looking at trying to give more um, detailed guidelines. So for instance, like fire retardant material on tents, if you have a certain type of heating source, a certain distance from the material and it's fire retardant, it would be acceptable. And rather than just blanket saying it is unacceptable, which is normally where they were, it's a more binary question. This is mm -hmm. a, what they're taking is a more nuanced approach at this question. And um, so ultimately, you're absolutely right. Safety is not gonna be sacrificed. We're not gonna turn one headline into another headline uh, by, by anything we would seek to do. Um, but again, the fire marshal would, the building official can't overrule the fire marshal. The fire marshal will have, will have primacy in the question of heating sources inside or in and around tents. And it sounds like, and again, um, if the fire marshal is taking a more nuanced view of, of um, what exactly is safe uh, in tents, it might be in, in heating tents, sorry, that it might be something that will last beyond the COVID um, and maybe make our outdoor dining situation a little more um, financially positive in the future. I, I can't speak for the fire marshal um, <laughs> moving forward, but, but there's a lot of things that are going on that's gonna be hard to put toothpaste back in the tube. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, any other questions for Mr. Ashton before we move on? No? Okay, thank you, Mr. Ashton. Uh, that brings us to uh, comments from the council. Who would like to start us off? Mr. McKenna. Yeah, just, um, Real quickly, I know our mayor was part of a um, 
a gathering of the Board of Supervisors uh, honoring her for her service to Herndon. Um, I obviously, you know, your, your tenure is uh, coming to a close shortly and uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, a couple things stuck out. Uh, it was three women that were honored uh, in leadership positions um, less than 100 years ago. Actually, 100 years ago in August, women got the right to vote, uh, women's suffrage. And uh, to see, and I've worked closely with two of you. Um, uh, Mayor Merkel, you've been fantastic to work with. Um, in the narrow times, we disagreed. Um, we had a few shouting matches, but at the end of the day, uh, we believed we were doing the right thing. And um, uh, I know that uh, the town will miss your stewardship, but I think it was great that they honored you for everything you did. So I just want to thank you, and um, I think it needs to be noted. So good on you. That's all. Thank you, sir. Um, who would like to go next? Okay, I'm just going to call on people then. Um, Ms. Friedrich, do you have anything for us? Um, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Mr. DeCall? I'm just um, going in the order that I see you guys on my screen. <laughs> sure. Uh, I do not have anything specific. I just wanted to commend the town manager and town staff for taking care of the issues uh, while I was, you know, uh, meeting the residents. There were some issues to be taken care of as soon as I send the email, it was taken care of. So thank you for taking care of the issues in that timely fashion. Bill, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Delagula. No. Uh, Ms. Baker. No, thank you. Okay, and Madam Vice Mayor. Yeah, and uh, I echo the remarks that uh, Council Member McKenna made. I made those at the work session last week, but uh, Again, congratulations on the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors acknowledging our mayor's good work with two other women in Fairfax County. And just for the record, if anyone's watching that normally comes to the Haunted Island, we will not be gathering on the Haunted Island, <coughs> giving out candy this year because of the COVID. Um, we have so many children come by and adults that we just didn't think that would be safe. But happy Halloween and we'll catch you next year. <laughs> Madam Mayor, you're on mute. Oh, geez. Next Tuesday is um, election night, and so we will not be meeting as a council for our work session on the 3rd, but we will convene on the 10th um, for our work session the following Tuesday. So um, everybody get out and vote. Um, next up, I will ask whether the clerk has received comments for the record or whether the clerk has received any transactional disclosure declarations from town council members on any of the items listed this evening. Yes, Madam Mayor, comments were received for comments from the audience pertaining to CARES Act funds. No disclosures were provided by council on any items listed on the agenda this evening. Thank you very much. So this does bring us to our comments from the audience portion of the agenda. Um, individuals may address the council on any matter that is not listed as a public hearing item on our agenda, and that does include our consent agenda item, which is the arts district item. Um, we are using a speakers list this evening to call on those who have registered for comments from the audience. So to begin, I will ask our town clerk once again if anyone has signed up to speak during this period. Yes, Madam Mayor, there is one registered speaker this evening. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I will recognize um, the individual who's registered on the speakers list. Um, we will pause briefly while IT enables the speaker's ability to address the council. You'll have up to three minutes. I ask you to state your name and address for the record. And um, there, there will be a timer on your screen. And when um, you see that there are about 30 seconds left, please try to wrap up. And I believe this is uh, Mr. Stephen Porter this evening who's planning to speak. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you and see you. Good evening. Good evening. Just a second, Willie. Madam Mayor, members of council and Mr. Ashton, my name is Stephen Porter and I reside at 905 Vine Street here in Herndon. I wanted to begin by thanking town staff for making the extra effort to call me after my comments last meeting asking for an update on the HPRB guidelines and letting me know about the meeting this Thursday. The extra effort and some of the additional information they provided was greatly appreciated. 
I also wanted to take a moment to voice my support for Ordinance 20-0-60 related to the Arts District. Historic small towns such as Herndon are typically associated with unique architecture, specialized businesses, festivals, and the arts. As I and others have previously mentioned, experiential or destination type offerings will be critical to the future of our town in drawing people in to visit Herndon, its restaurants, its hotels, and its other businesses. These types of arts-oriented businesses and organizations also provide much needed recreational, educational, and enrichment opportunities for our own residents. Herndon has excellent resources to feed our bodies, sorry, excellent restaurants to feed our bodies, but we also need things to feed our spirits and intellects. These types of offerings, however, take time to establish themselves for long-term viability. The ordinance will expand the definition of the arts district to include not only businesses, but also organizations, help with reduction of some startup costs, and relax several general zoning requirements. This should help the MBA to get up and running. Perhaps more importantly, the 10-year rebate on town property taxes will help free up much needed funds to grow and firmly establish the facilities. The arts in their various forms have been, are, and will continue to be a critical part of the Herndon community. And I strongly encourage you to adopt the ordinance to help attract more great opportunities into our town. Thank you for your time and for all that you do for our community. I'll submit a written copy of these remarks to the clerk for the record. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Porter. And I believe we only have the one speaker this evening. So um, that will complete our comments portion and we'll move right into our public hearings. Um, I'll open the public hearings listed on the agenda this evening. And the first is ordinance 2058 to authorize the use of eminent domain for the acquisition of a fee simple interest and a temporary easement on property owned by the Richmond Corporation at 640 Eldon Street for transportation facility improvements at the Eldon Monroe Street intersection. Um, I'll recognize our Deputy Director of Public Works, John Irish, for the staff report. And I believe um, our Deputy Town Attorney, Laurie Sigler, is also here and may have some input as well. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Town Council. Uh, this evening, the order, the uh, business before us is to authorize the acquisition of right away for a project called Elvin Monroe Intersection. And I'd like to give you a brief background on that and then Lori will fill you in on the details. Elvin Street and Monroe Street Intersection Project is a longstanding CIP project. It dovetails with other CIP projects that we've already completed, mainly phase two streetscapes and the second one is the East Elden Street uh, widening project. Next slide, please. As you can see in this slide, the orientation is that the Anita's restaurant is to the bottom left, the Trinity, that Trinity Church is to the bottom right, Junction Square top left, and Pine Shopping Center top right. So this intersection project is intended to improve the uh, pedestrian flow and the vehicular flow as well. We'll be adding the uh, bricks, crosswalks, and sidewalk features that we have in the rest of the downtown. There'll be a new pedestrian uh, signaling for ADA compliance. There will be a new traffic signal as well. In the area of easement that we're trying to acquire is to the upper right corner on the Pine Shopping Center. The primary purpose is to allow us to improve that radius of the corner that you see there and make a better traffic movement. Next slide, please. So basically, we've used as much of the existing right away as possible. And what we are asking for is not that much of an area Next slide, please. <clears throat> if you see here, the dark blue is the right of way. It's 132 square feet. And then the orange is a temporary construction easement as well of 111 square feet. The blue is the only permanent right of way. The orange temporary would go away once the, uh, pro once the project has been completed. And with that, I will turn it over to Lori. Thank you, John. Uh, good evening, uh, John Council. 
Uh, and Madam Mayor, uh, this is Lori Sigler, Deputy Town Attorney. Um, I'm going to give you just a little bit more information um, about the town's authority to use its eminent domain power. Uh, we have to follow very strict um, specifications in the Code of Virginia in order to exercise that authority. Um, the project for which we need the land must be for a public purpose, which in this case are the transportation um, facility improvements. No more of private property may be taken than is necessary for the project. And we have to make a written offer and a bona fide effort um, to reach an agreement with the property owner. Um, in this project, there were three properties that we needed to acquire interest from. Um, Tellez Herndon, which is the Anita's property, uh, we were able to reach an agreement with that owner. And the First Baptist Church of Herndon, uh, we were able to reach an agreement. Um, and I have signed deeds for, for both of those property acquisitions. Um, we're here to ask you um, to use eminent domain for the interest that we need from the Richmond Corporation, which is the owner of the Pine Shopping Center. Um, again, in order to, um, to proceed with condemnation, um, we do need specific, we need to hold this public hearing and then the town council has to specifically authorize staff to move forward with that. Um, in this case, we're asking to go forward because the owner has not um, been engaged and uh, we cannot therefore agree um, on compensation. Um, we do have to give the owner notice. Uh, first of all, the offer package uh, went out on September 8th and we asked them, the, all the property owners, to get back to us by the end of September, September 30th, uh, when we did not hear from the Richmond Corp, we did send out a um, another letter on October 8th, which is statutorily required, and it was a notice of intent to file the certificate of take. Um, we cannot file that certificate um, until 30 days has passed from the date of that letter. So right about November 9th, we will be able to file the certificate, and we have to file it within 45 days of that October uh, letter. Uh, so we have gone through all the proper steps, uh, given the proper notification, um, and staff is asking that the council does approve the use of eminent domain um, in this case. And that is all I have, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you both. Um, what questions do you have for Ms. Sigler or Mr. Irish from the town council? Any questions? Uh, Madam Vice Mayor, followed by Ms. Friedrichs. Thank you. Um, for our attorney, Lori Sickler. Um, so all of the owners except for Richmond Corporation have responded, is that correct? That is correct, uh, Vice Mayor Olam. Um, again, both of our letters, the offer package and the other notice letter do have to go out certified mail return receipt um, and i did receive um, green cards from the owner on both of those um, both of those letters okay and for mr irish so we're only talking about 132 square feet for um permanent and then 111 is only for a temporary construction on um yes, correct. so we're only taking 132 square feet Correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Ms. Friedrichs. Ms. Sigler, um, how is the uh, amount that we are offering um, Richmond Corporation, Richmond Corporation been, um, been determined? That's the $5,291.96 that we've offered for the 132 feet. Right. Uh, this is Lori Sigler, um, Deputy Town Attorney. Um, Ms. Fredericks, when we, with the amount, if we establish that the amount is under a certain threshold, um, which I believe is $25,000, um, the town is able to use the assessed value of the property. Um, and then, so we come up with a per unit value, um, a per square foot for the property. Um, we do 
pay and offer 100% of value for the right-of-way acquisition because we're actually taking taking the property. Um, but for something like a temporary construction easement, that's usually discounted at about 10% of the full value because again we're only using it for the length of the project and the owner's never divested of title for that um, in this case we actually had a couple um, some of the landscaping is going to be affected um, and we are actually compensating them we had offered to compensate them uh, for a tree and also 10 shrubs on the property and um, what's the approximate length of time of this project can you give me an uh, ballpark? That's actually probably a Mr. Irish question. John Irish with Public Works. Uh, the approximate length of this project will probably be about six months once we start construction. The time of starting of construction is scheduled to be in the first of 2021. So by the mid to late summer, I would expect hopefully we would be completed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Baker. Yeah, um, so uh, Ms. Ziegler, just to put a fine point on this to make sure I understand this, we don't necessarily know that this is a cost issue with the Richmond Group because they literally just haven't responded to us. Uh, uh, Councilwoman uh, Baker, this is Lori Ziegler. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, because right, there's, there's usually right a negotiation period, but exactly, we just have not heard from the property just owner to know what any issue lack of response mm -hmm. um and this lack of response of course potentially is going to will it potentially delay the project um i mean i know it sounds like john from what you just said we're planning to start this in 2021 anyway so it sounds like we have enough leeway to not um, negatively impact the project Laura, you can answer that, but basically that's the purpose of the certificate of take. So once that is filed, we have uh, due rights to the project while negotiations continue on however long it takes. Okay, great. And then my last question is just, so the there's the pizza business in the front of that property. Will that be impacted at all by the, during the construction period or? The business itself should not be. Um, if the area of the temporary construction easement creates any sort of access issues, we obviously will require the contractor to make provisions so that it does not affect the business. Got it. Right. I just I'm, I know there's that entryway that's kind of tight. I don't know exactly from looking at the diagram measurements of where that affects, but we'll obviously make sure that it doesn't negatively impact that business operating. Absolutely right. not. Yes. Right. Very good, thank you. Thank you, any other questions of council or from council? Mr. Delagula. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Mayor, it's Council Member Delagula. Um, and I guess, um, just to uh, understand it. So when we file the certificate of take, that automatically allows us to move forward regardless of whether or not they pick up the phone in a week or two weeks we can still proceed as planned, correct? Yeah, Councilman Delagula, this is a Lori Sigler. Uh, that's correct. What the certificate does, we actually file that in the land records um, at the Fairfax County Courthouse. So that gives us the feasible title to the property. Um, and then we can certainly continue to negotiate. Uh, hopefully uh, we will hear from the property owner. We do have to send them another notice when that certificate is actually filed. Uh, so that will be done. Um, and um, we can continue to negotiate um, and and uh, reach a resolution and then a final order is actually signed um, that that actually closes the case. But we do have title immediately upon yeah. filing. No, thank you for that. So I've only been on council a little while here. So is this normal in terms of an owner not responding? I mean, I understood the first outreach was September 8th or something. Um, it's been a while for someone not to respond to uh, a potential you know, take in this sense. So I just, again, I, I don't know if you can shed light on that. Is that normal? And then, you know, what, what is the, the outcome from that? Uh, are people generally upset or are they cooperative after a certain point? I guess I'm asking, is this normal? 
Um, Councilman Delangula, this is Lori Sigler again. Um, I guess from my experience with the projects that we've had here um, we, on uh, the Van Buren project, I believe we did not hear from um, a property owner. Um, sometimes what I had heard from owners who did contact us, um, if there's a mortgage or a, a loan deed of trust against the property, the lender has to be involved also in the sign off uh, of the deed, whereas when the certificate is filed, um, sometimes it has been a little easier to, to work with the lender. Now, again, I don't know if that is the case here, um, but sometimes uh, we have found that it's once the certificate of take is filed, it's, it's often easier um, to have discussions with the lender and they're a little more responsive even in some cases. But like I said, I, in this case, I do not. I do not know the specifics or the facts. No. Thank you for the insight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on? Move on. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing, so I will ask the deputy town clerk if anyone has signed up to speak on this item. No, Madam Mayor. There are no registered speakers. Okay. Thank you. So I will close the public hearing and move to council level for discussion and action. Uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Um, Madam Mayor, this is Olam. I move approval of ordinance 20-0-58 for approval. This is Pradeep and I second that. Okay, we have a motion to approve made by the vice, the vice mayor and seconded by Mr. DeCall. Um, is there discussion on the motion? Yes, ma'am. Yes, oh, I'm speaking. Um, yes, this definitely is going to be a public improvement and this um, intersection has been a long way coming to be a lot more safer, safer and visible for the many number of people that cross that intersection. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thank you, uh, Mr. DeCall or anyone else, any comments? Ms. Friedrichs? Um, I second what the, uh, what the Vice Mayor said. Um, the people have been complaining about that uh, crosswalk and the light there um, for years now. And um, a lot of the time we've said, well, as soon as we can replace this, this light, you know, it's a big project and, you know, we can't do it right away. But as soon as we do that, we can fix a lot of um, traffic complaints. I also am glad that we're able to provide ADA compliant um, sidewalks because the more ADA compliant we are, the less, uh, first of all, the better it is for people like my mom who's in a wheelchair, but also the better it is for us as a town because it's a risk issue. So um, I'm, I'm sorry that Richmond Corporation hasn't gotten back to us, um, but uh, we're not doing anything um, extraordinary to them. And in fact, they'll get reimbursed. So I think this is a great idea, a great project. And I thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Okay, seeing none, I will call the, the question and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Olam? Olam, yes. Baker? Baker, yes. Delagula? Delagula, yes. DeCall? DeCall, yes. Friedrichs? Friedrichs, yes. McKenna? McKenna, yes. Merkel? Merkel, yes. That motion carries unanimously. Um, our next public hearing is Ordinance 20059 to consider zoning map amendment um, number 20-01 for property at 450, 455, 460, 65, 70, 75, 80, and 85 Spring Park Place. Zoning map amendment for a unified commercial subdivision for the subdivision of four parcels into eight parcels. Um, before we get started, I wanna make sure everyone is aware that staff provided a revised ordinance, which was dated and distributed October 26th. The revision is on page one, paragraph A, and uh, changed the sentence regarding the date of the proffers. The revised ordinance was posted on our website along with this agenda item, and council should have access to that. Um, so I will recognize our zoning administrator, uh, David Stromberg, for the staff report. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Merkel and all members of the town council. I'm David Stromberg, the zoning administrator for the town. And this is zoning map amendment number, DMA number 20-01 for the Spring Park Technology Center. Next slide. 
the applicant is requesting a zoning map amendment so that they can uh, allow this existing development to be subdivided under the provisions of a unified commercial subdivision. A unified commercial subdivision allows multiple owners to own different parcels, but from a regular, regulatory standpoint and uh, really from observing the project, it appears as a unified whole. Only the town council has the authority to approve unified commercial subdivisions. Uh, that's not something that staff is able to do. Uh, historically, unified commercial subdivisions um, are usually tied with the project kind of at the beginning. Um, so this is a little bit unusual in that this project has been around since 1985. Um, at that time, they didn't expect to be selling off buildings individually. Um, so this action is required now to allow the current owner to do that, um, yet still maintain that single unified uh, image as a whole. Um, the proposed zoning map amendment is from plan development business, which is the current zoning, without any proffers to plan development business with proffers and a generalized development plan added. Uh, the applicant is not proposing any changes to the overall density of the site. Next slide. I'm going to start with the existing zoning, and that's shown there on the map to your left of the screen. Uh, again, the site's plan development business. Um, and then looking across the street on the south side of Spring Street, uh, where the and rest in business park is that's for the self-storage facility and then there's that kind of row of retail um, at the front of those buildings um, that property is also zoned pdb uh, the spring spark spring park station townhome uh, those are also south of this site those are zoned residential townhouse cluster and then to the east and the west uh, that's where the fairfax county connector maintenance facility is, uh, and then the existing, another existing office park over there to the west. Uh, those are both zoned office and light industrial zoning district. Then you can see the land use map from the Herndon 2030 comprehensive plan is there on the right side of the screen. Uh, this site, along with pretty much everything on the north side of Spring Street, uh, are designated in the comprehensive plan as office parks and flexible space. Uh, the Springs Park Station townhomes and the Van Buren Estate Single Family Subdivision to the southwest, those are designated as neighborhood conservation. And then the Herndon Rest and Business Park again and the Boeing property to the southeast are designated as regional corridor mixed use. Um, and those properties are within the future boundary of the transit-related growth small area plan. Next slide. Again, the entire property is on the north side of Spring Street, and its northern boundary bumps up against the Washington and Old Dominion Trail. The overall development is just under 22 acres, and it has four existing lots. The size of the existing lots range from approximately four acres to six acres. Um, each lot has two existing buildings. And again, all of these lots are under uh, single ownership. And next slide. So this shows the approximate location of where the new property lines would be drawn in order to create those eight lots. Um, each resulting lot would contain a building, it's associated parking, and some green space around it. Um, and it would vary, again, between each of those lots. Individually, not every lot can comply with the requirements of the zoning ordinance for the PDB zoning district. Um, it only works when you look at all of these properties combined. That's why the applicant can't come in and simply do a buy right uh, subdivision. That's why they're going through this process. Um, what happens on one property affects the others. Uh, but again, looking at the property as a whole, it does comply with all of the requirements uh, for open space and density um, and all the other development criteria uh, for any project. Next slide. 
The Staffield rezoning proposal does align with the intent of both the land use designation um, of office parks and flexible space, and again with the plan development business district, which is designed to have some flexibility in there. The applicant has proffered the creation of a future property owners association, and that property owner association will manage shared parking across uh, the entire development. All of the lots are required to participate in that shared parking program. Um, and so they can allocate spaces if a more parking heavy user moves into one building and then the building next to it has a low parking heavy user so they can kind of shift that parking around amongst the entire site. All of the property owners are responsible for the infrastructure on their own lots, but if there is any shared infrastructure that goes between the different lots, um, all of the properties that are party to that are responsible for any of that shared infrastructure. Next slide. So staff is recommending that the town council adopt the ordinance of approval for the zoning map amendment, which again is the MA number 20-01, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stromberg. What questions do we have uh, for the zoning administrator? Anybody? Ms. Friedrichs? Um, so I just have the questions that I had last time. Is the owner in, um, with us tonight? Uh, we do have uh, the applicant's agent, Ken Wire, is here, as well as um, Lauren Cowell, I believe is how you pronounce her last name, with Penzance, who's also the applicant. But I was specifically asking for questions for the zoning administrator before they speak. Sorry. Um, so um, I just wanted to make sure that um, I had asked, do we have other unified commercial subdivisions in Herndon? I'm sorry, um, Councilwoman, could you, could you ask that again? Cut out for a minute. Do we have other unified commercial subdivisions in Herndon? We do. Um, we actually haven't had one for a while, um, but probably the most recent one is at the corner of um, Van Beer and then Eldon Street, where the Walgreens is, um, and the bank is there, and the 7-Eleven, and that strip of retail. That's mm -hmm. actually a unified commercial subdivision. They're all different property owners. But again, it functions as one whole. So um, if if one person, if one uh, property owner were to decide that they wanted to upgrade the property in some way to change the style or the height, um, they wouldn't be able to do that. Is that correct? Right. There are, there are limitations. So adding additional space in there, you're pretty much locked in by your floor area ratio or your density. Um, there on those sites. So you couldn't just go and add an additional story there. Uh, this would kind of prevent and control that. But there are other modifications you could make, um, such as changing the interior space itself, as long as you're not adding actual floor area or changing the exterior of the building, you would be able to do that. So if, if, um, if it were desirable for the property owners to add height, they would need to join together agree on the pro prospect and then apply for um, zoning uh, changes again? Right, if the property owners at some point, say 20, 30 years in the future, wanted to join back together, um, they could come back to the council and request a different rezoning. Um, this would prevent essentially one singular property. Um, they could always ask for it, but it wouldn't, there wouldn't really be any much justification for approving it. Um, but I, I, it I don't really kind of prevent a, a singular property from going forward and redeveloping. This actually protects um, these types of buildings, which are running a little bit in shortage in the area for this type of flexible space type of building. I don't think I was, I was really asking the question you answered. Um, what I was asking more was, what would they do if they decided, if, if one property owner said, I'd really like to have a second level, um, what about you guys? Do you want a second level? Is that how they would uh, do it? Or, I mean, would they have to join together um, and not be a unified commercial subdivision in order to make those kinds of changes? 
they would need to come together and apply for a rezoning. Right now, if a property owner requested to add an additional story to one of those buildings, staff would deny it because it wouldn't comply with these proper conditions that would be adopted. It would be denied. But if, the, if they all wanted to do that, it would be accepted or it could be accepted? It would come back and be evaluated for a rezoning proposal and it would go before the Planning Commission and the Town Council with the staff recommendation to change the zoning. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Are there any more questions for the zoning administrator before I um, introduce our applicants? Anybody? No. Um, okay, so um, I will give IT a second to um, to elevate their status to be able to speak. Um, but we do have the applicant's agent, Ken Wire of Wiregill LLP, um, here, who I believe would probably like to address the council, and as well as Lauren Cowell with Penzance, um, who is also available if there are questions. Lauren, am I saying your last name correctly? Um, no, it, it's Cole. Cole, I apologize. I'm glad I asked. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Mayor. If I may go ahead. Sure, go ahead. I didn't I didn't see you pop up. So Sorry about nice, that. nice to hear you, Mr. Wire. Good to be here. And it's my second night in Herndon. We had a public hearing last night at Planning Commission. So I, feel I heard a, very I, I heard it was a doozy. <laughs> it's very efficient. We appreciate it. Um, for the record, uh, my name is Ken Wire. I'm the zoning attorney with the law firm Wire Gill, representing Penzance. Lauren is here with me, Madam Mayor, as you just mentioned. I appreciate staff's effort on working through this. Um, it may not be typical in Herndon, but when you drive up and down the toll road, you typically see, there they call them final development plans or conceptual development plans, very large um, entitlements that go forward at one time. Usually contemporaneous with that entitlement, the developer carves off individual buildings so those buildings can be sold. You can see evidence of that in our 1980 era's approval where they had four different lots. Can't explain why they only had four, not eight. It's just a coincidence through the intervening 40 years, it was one owner. So Penzance bought the property within the past year, year and a half, I think, Lauren, and has been investing in upgrading the property. And subdivision really helps Penzance track additional investment for each individual building. It's quite a lot to own all as one entity, but you could see tenant operators wanting to own each individual lot to invest in it. So we think we've crafted a good set of proffers. Um, most of the toll road projects you see, they have proffers similar to this where we're all bound to a unified commercial subdivision, and that's a certain development approval you all have issued. We agree to keep all the easements in place. We agree to maintain all the facilities, and if we need to maintain parking, we'll referee ourselves before we come to you and say, there's a different owner in this building, and here's how we'll operate. Um, Councilman Friedrichs, to your question, they would have to come in as a unified group, and that's actually a protection. We don't want one owner going into default and causing a problem for everybody else. So we set up this private structure that's sort of a mini government well, amongst ourselves to keep ourselves organized. And it is very typical, and I appreciate the town attorney's efforts in keeping the proffers uh, appropriately detailed, because we don't want to make them so detailed that if we change a sentence, we have to come back into you all. So we think you've done a nice job balancing the interest, and uh, we look forward to attracting additional investment to Herndon. And Lauren and I are available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wire. Um, what questions do we have um, for the applicants this evening? Anybody? No? Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. You must have done a good job explaining it to us. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, thank, you. thank you. So that, um, let me see where we are. So uh, do, I will close the public hearing and um, Actually, I need to make sure we do we have anybody uh, signed up to speak in the public hearing? I apologize. Sure. Uh, no, Madam Mayor, there are not registered speakers this evening. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so with that, I will close the public hearing and move to council level for discussion and action. And the, the motion would be to approve the revised ordinance 2059, which was dated and distributed October 26 for zoning map amendment ZMA 20-01 Spring Park Place for a unified commercial subdivision. Is there a motion? Madam Mayor, uh, I move approval of ZMA, uh, sorry, of Ordinance 20 0 59, the revised version. Baker, I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion to approve uh, made by Ms. Friedrich, seconded by Ms. Baker. Discussion on the motion? Yes, ma'am. 
I, so I drove around the property today and I just have to compliment the owner. It's really nicely kept. It's in, in good condition. And um, the, it sounds like you've got everything in order and it'll be a, a, a great change for you and for Herndon. So I support this. Thank you. Further discussion? Yeah, I would just add, as you said, this is a unique space. I, I love that Herndon, we're lucky to have a few really unique uh, spaces in town to accommodate different types of businesses. And so I welcome this, uh, this change and improvement. Thank you, Mr. McKenna. Yeah, also um, I wanna thank staff for um, all their efforts on this and also uh, to Mr. Wire to give context in regards to the um, a, a broader picture. Uh, it's always good to have use cases. Um, some of us are in sales and use cases are everything what everyone wants. So I uh, really appreciate that and this is a great idea. Thank you. Any other comments from any of my colleagues? Okay, seeing none, I will um, ask the clerk to please call the roll. Olam? Olam, yes. Baker? Baker, yes. Delagula? Delagula, yes. DeCall? DeCall, yes. Friedrichs? Friedrichs, yes. McKenna? McKenna's yes. Merkel? Merkel is yes. That motion carries unanimously as well. Um, that brings us to our general item this evening, which is Ordinance 20060 to amend Chapter 7, Arts Districts for Arts-Focused Redevelopment and to establish new incentives for creation and support of new art arts redevelopment projects. And I believe I am recognizing the town attorney for the staff report, and we will move it to you, Madam Town Attorney. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Lisa Yates, town attorney. Um, section 15.2-941.1 of the Code of Virginia authorizes the creation of arts and cultural districts by localities and sets forth the types of incentives that can be offered in these districts. Back in 2016, the town of Herndon created its first uh, arts district for the purpose of increasing awareness and support for the arts and providing incentives for the support and creation of arts within the district. This ordinance before you this evening will amend chapter seven, which is our arts district ordinance, by one, creating a new definition of arts business, and two, creating a new term called arts focused redevelopment and establishing incentives for support and creation of arts focused redevelopment projects. Uh, an arts business will now be called an uh, will now be called an arts business or organization in order to include not for profit organizations. In order to qualify as an arts business or organization, greater than 50% of the floor area of the business or organization must be used for arts instruction, media arts, performing arts, uh, performing arts venues, visual arts creation or visual arts exhibits as defined within chapter seven of the town code. And the business or organization may engage in related incidental retail sales as an accessory use. A qualified arts business can potentially obtain up to $2,000 in incentives and the benefit of the uh, special sign ordinance for the district. An arts-focused redevelopment is the new term. Um, it's being added to the chapter and such a development will be entitled to incentives in addition to those available to individual arts businesses or organizations. In order to qualify as an arts-focused redevelopment project, the project must be located in the arts district on or after the adoption of this ordinance either and either currently zoned or rezoned to PDTD, Planned Development Traditional Downtown, and have a minimum of 15% of the ground level gross floor area exclusive of structured parking of the redevelopment project dedicated to qualified arts businesses or organizations. A project must submit a written application to the Community Development Department and submit to a review of qualification factors. Upon determination that the project is a qualified arts focused development, the project is entitled to 50% reduction in water availability fees, sewer availability fees, 
and building permit fees associated with the initial establishment of the redevelopment project. If applicable, a reduction in the number of parking spaces required for multifamily residential uses not to, to not then, less than 1.25 spaces per dwelling unit. Deferral of certain recreational amenity contributions for up to 10 years and an annual rebate up to 100% of real estate taxes attributed to the total redevelopment for up to 10 consecutive years. Qualification for the real estate tax um, incentive shall be established on an annual basis for um, multiple years. Since there's currently limited property within the arts district that is um, zoned PDTD, the hope is that the increased incentives will encourage rezoning to this district, PDTD, which provides for uh, more harmonious and creative de development and leads to adaptive uses and revitalization using the traditional downtown form. These amendments, we believe, create additional opportunities to expand the type, uh, quality, and quantity of art offerings to town citizens town residents and increase the town's presence as a destination for art activities. Uh, also with us this evening is our town zoning administrator, Dave Stromberg. Both of us would be happy to answer any questions or provide you with more information. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, does Mr. Stromberg have a presentation or just available for questions? He's just available for questions, unless okay. he's done something I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> just want to make sure I'm giving everybody their time. Okay, so um, we had a very robust discussion about this last week at the work session. So what, what additional questions do we have this evening? Anyone? Ms. Friedrich, followed by Mr. Delagula. Uh, so I just want to make sure that, um, that we're clear on what the benefit is for this, um, this arts district for the redevelopment of the business. Say a business, uh, an arts oriented business um, decides to buy property in the arts district and the property costs for the purposes of our discussion $100,000 and they put in about $10,000 worth of improvements. Am I correct in thinking that it's the $10,000 of improvements that they get the tax break on? It well, what's most important is first, in order to qualify for any incentive, um, they would have to be located in a PDTD zoning, uh, you know, zoning area. Um, in most cases, that is going to require a rezoning. Um, then they are going to um, need to have um, at least uh, fifteen percent of their, um, and I need to find it here, 15% uh, of their ground level gross floor area exclusive of structured parking um, of the redevelopment project dedicated to qualified arts businesses and organizations. Um, additionally, they have to submit an application requesting um, that they be qualified and assuming that they meet those qualifications, they are going to, um, you know, receive the benefit of whatever incentives apply to them regard so assuming they've met all that is that what you're saying with your yes i'm starting from <laughs> i'm starting from them having rezoned and been approved and now having improved their property uh approximately ten thousand dollars in this case that i'm uh, presenting to you and my arg my question is is it that $10,000 upon which they are receiving um, real estate tax um, forgiveness if they, if they are approved? If they were eligible to receive it, I'm going to I'm going to let the town manager answer this one. Um, again, it could be for up to 10 years um, and it's a rebate, not a tax abatement. So they would pay and be refunded. Um, did you hear the question? Uh, I did. I did, Madam Town Attorney. This is Bill Ashton, Town Manager. Uh, it would be the increment above the current assessment. So, so to your point, the ten thousand dollars would be eligible, but not the hundred thousand dollars base where they would be sitting. 
So we would continue as a town to um, keep the tax payment on the 100000 in my scenario. Yeah, and correct. We would return, assuming everything went according to their plan, the uh, the tax on the improvement area. Okay, it, correct. They would pay the 110 and then we would rebate on the 10 Okay. And... Do they need to have an improvement every year after that for 10 years, or is it they get the rebate on that $10,000 for no, 10 this, years? This is Bill Ashton, town manager again. Um, no, it would be on the use. It, this is our way of ensuring that somebody doesn't stand up a use for a year or two, take the full 10 years of rebates, but only have their business for a year or two. We're, so okay. the reapplication is to ensure that they maintain 15% of the of the ground floor area in a in an arch use for the entire time of the program. And another thing that confuses me in here is that it says 15% of the floor space in one section, and then it says 50% of the floor space in another section. Am I right in thinking that the 50% is for the individual art business and the 15% is for the entire project, assuming that there are multiple businesses there? Correct. Two different okay. types of incentives, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. I believe Mr. Delagula was next. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is Councilmember Legula. And that was uh, going to be my follow up question. Uh, thank you, Sydney. Great question. Um, I guess my last question is did anything change from our very uh, in involved, insightful uh, work session discussion? Because I thought it was pretty darn good. This is Bill Ashton, town manager. The only thing that has changed from my perspective is another property owner in the downtown called me. To, to thank us for doing this. And and they, it was really happy that we're looking at incentives to uh, spark economic development in the downtown. And he was effusive in his praise of this council for taking this up. No, thank you for that feedback. And uh, I'm, I'm totally gonna support this. Thank you. Thank you. Other uh, discussion, um, Mr. DeCall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is uh, oh, Council me. Member Dakal. And I think I misspoke. This is uh, questions. I apologize. <laughs> okay. And I think that's what you were doing anyway, Pradeep. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, you know, I just wanted to be more clear uh, on the question that uh, Council Member Fidrich asked. So, let's say, you know, the, the total value of that land or that... Um, the, structure is 100,000 and then they did some uh, improvement and it became 110,000 and then they will pay the tax for the 10 years up front and then every single year is okay I think uh, this bill you're trying to answer answer. that question okay no no I just want to correct you on one of the points okay they don't pay the entire 10 years up front each year mm -hmm. they pay on their 110,000 okay and then and then they also apply for the rebate and then we will go do the assessment make sure you know it uh, follows the criteria and based on that we'll do the refund right of so, the 10000 mm -hmm. of the 10000 so yeah. if there is further improvement let's say the next two year it becomes 150000 mm -hmm. then again we still get the tax of the base 100000 but the fifty thousand dollar that is the improved value again we will um give them refund based on that this is bill ashton town manager that is correct that is a fair fair assessment okay thing. great thank you and one more question is so i i'm reading this and i see um you know i was reading and 15 percent of actually the ground level gross floor ratio so that means um Let's say that the entire, let's say the building is uh, 500,000 square feet and the ground level is 100,000 feet, then 15% of that 100,000 feet only, not the 500,000 feet, correct? Yes. So that's where, okay, okay. So um, 
and if, if I can put a mm -hmm. finer point on this, this is the last okay. time I answer again. If you look at the PDT district, what we're trying to do is get more mixed use. Traditionally, what you're going to see is the upper floors being residential. So mm -hmm. we didn't want to count the residential against them. Ground floor would be more retail oriented. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was more appropriate just to focus on the ground floor where the arch use would be more appropriate mm -hmm. for the residential area. So even if they build uh, something, let's say, three-storied and all those floors are oh. used for business purpose only, in that case also the 15% is of the ground floor only, not the entire building. Am I right saying that? Can, can I yield get Dave Stromberg in on this <laughs> one, please? <laughs> yes, uh, you're exactly right, Council on the call. Um, you're looking all at the ground level, so it's 15% of the floor area of that ground level um, and the uses that are occurring on that level, not of the additional levels that would be up above it. All right, so my last question, I promise, is obviously we are using that as a measurement for the ground. Does not mean that the art business cannot be in the second or third floor, correct? It can be any floor, but when we are doing the measurement, uh, that has to be 15% of the ground area. Is that correct? Right. It wouldn't be prohibited unless for mm -hmm. some reason during the rezoning, um, the developer wanted to proffer that only certain uses to go on the second or third floor. Um, but as far as this ordinance is concerned, no, that wouldn't prohibit it. Okay, great. Thank you. I was just making sure uh, nobody gets confused. I don't get confused that the art business has to be only in the ground level, but it can be in any level. We're just using that for the measurement. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, what other questions do, does council have before we uh, entertain a motion? Anyone? Okay, seeing none, um, I will entertain a motion. Madam Vice Mayor. This is Olam, Madam Mayor. I move approval of Ordinance 20-0-60. And I will Steve second. Call and I second. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Thanks for letting me do that. Um, so we have a motion to approve made by the Vice Mayor, seconded by the Chair. Is uh, there discussion on the motion? Yes, Olam. it does, Madam Mayor. This is <laughs> I bet there is. <laughs> This, this is so exciting, and I know uh, wherever my friend Lester's idea, he's jumping up and down with this excitement. Uh, he was an individual, but has really brought the arts to Herndon. And when we didn't have a building and we didn't have a building, he and some other folks, including Richard Downer, former <coughs> member of this council, decided to go take an old cement building and turn it, turn it into a little art gallery and put music on and plays on and anything else they could get in there. And I can tell you the businesses in the downtown always knew when there were events going on at Art Space. And it could only hold about maybe 40 people. If we got any larger, the fire marshal would come close us down. So I'm real excited about this. And I'm really excited that we have finally extended it because it was so hard when the mayor and I were first bringing this forward back in 2016, and we could bar barely get it approved. So exciting right. times for Herndon. Thank you, uh, Mr. DeCall, followed by Ms. Friedrichs. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. This is Councilman DeCall. Um, I absolutely support this as well, because this helps arts, this helps businesses, this helps the overall development, and also it helps to increase the the assessed value of that you know particular area, and in turn uh, increases our maybe not for the ten years, but after that you know our tax revenue as well. So I think this is a great delayed gratification we all can mm -hmm. have. So I absolutely support that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Friedrichs. So I uh, want to second and third what um, what the vice mayor and Mr. DeCal both said. Um, the arts district is part of our uh, our I believe it's our 2035 vision by which all of our um, decisions need to be made and supporting something that makes Herndon different from other areas around is really um going to add to what we already have, which is a very community-based, very tightly knit um, 
society. So I love the fact that we're encouraging redevelopment. I love the fact that we are getting more tax revenues from this because honestly, uh, people who bought a, a property are already um, improving our revenue stream. Um, and I love the fact that this, it, uh, in an arts area, the more there is, the more there needs to be because people go from place to place to place and then they go out to dinner. And I'm, I, this hits all the, all the nails on the head and I won't go on because I, I really, really want to, but <laughs> I think this is wonderful and I support it. Thank you. I believe I saw Mr. DeLagula. Just to reiterate that I'm <laughs> supporting actually, um, I actually had a conversation with Les the, the day he passed. And this was one of the things that we talked about. So I'm in full support. Totally agree. Um, Ms. Baker or Mr. McKenna? Mr. McKenna? Yeah, um, again, reiterating what everyone said, but more importantly, I think, um, you know, the 30,000 foot view of this is, you know, our council's mission, we talked about, you know, things of diversity and, you know, affordability and things of that nature, this hits all those spots because it's not just about residential, it's also about businesses. And, you know, there's other places where people are being, you know, they're, they're not welcome. We say Herndon's a hometown for everybody. We truly mean it when we make these initiatives. So, um, you know, good on the staff, good on council, and more importantly, you know, let's, uh, let's strive for a better day. So this is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Yeah, I mean, we we obviously have a very supportive, very arts-focused council. Um, we talk about this, uh, uh, several of you have mentioned the 2035 vision. That one of the five pillars is, of course, the arts and how important arts is just to our health and well-being, um, and also to how that drives business and drives just energy and um, to our downtown, to our community. Um, and certainly, I think the vice mayor talks a lot about sense of place and those differentiators that make Herndon Herndon and make it unique. And the things, as again, just to honor what Les Seidel and many of you have mentioned him, just to honor what so many folks and council member, the previous council member Downer, and so many folks have um, have done a lot of hard work to get us to this point um, to continue to just. Uh, really cement the fact that we are an arts town and an arts community. So thank you for that. Yes, thank thank you all. I, I concur. It is really wonderful to be seated here, even virtually, with a council that is so supportive of the arts because it hasn't always been that way. Um, I remember, I'm trying to remember if it was 2010 or 2012, um, Fairfax County's comprehensive plan included various uh, community arts hubs around the county, and downtown Herndon was listed and still is listed as an arts community arts hub for the northwest part of the county. Um, the Fairfax County Economic Development Authority agreed with that wholeheartedly, and I won't... Um, reiterate it too much, but we all know that the economic impact that the arts brings to a community and it's just what we need in our in our downtown. So I'm excited to get this going. I appreciate all my colleagues who are also so supportive. And with that, I will ask the clerk to, I will call the question and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Olam? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I'm assuming you said Baker. Baker, yes. yes. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we couldn't hear it either. Okay. Oh, okay. Can you hear me okay? Yes. We can now, yes. Okay. Uh, Delagula? Delagula, heck, yes. Dakal? Dakal, yes, yes. <laughs> Friedrich? Friedrich, so many yeses. McKenna? McKenna is a yes. Merkel? Merkel, yes, yes, yes. So thank you all very much, and thanks for having a sense of humor as well. Can't underestimate that, especially right now. So that passes unanimously. Let's get ourselves an arts district going down here. Um, finally, uh, we have two items on the consent agenda. One is a contract award um, for general engineering services, and one is to appoint Jay Donahue as the town resident member of our planning commission. Is there a motion for the consent agenda? Ms. Vice Mayor. This is the Vice Mayor. Madam Mayor, I move approval of the consent agenda. This is Councilmember DeCall. I second that. Okay, we have a motion to approve made by the Vice Mayor, seconded by Mr. DeCall. Um, I will call the question and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Olam? Yes. Baker? Baker, yes. Delagula? Delagula, yes. DeCall? DeCall, yes. Friedrichs? 
Friedrichs, yes. McKenna? McKenna, yes. Merkel? Merkel, yes. That motion carries. And that concludes our agenda this evening. Madam Mayor, this is the Vice Mayor Olam. I move we adjourn, seeing there's no other business. Mm -hmm. Baker, I'll second that. Okay, motion to adjourn by Ms. Olam, seconded by Ms. Baker, and I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Olam? Olam, yes. Baker? Baker, yes. Delagula? Delagula, yes. To call? To call, yes. Friedrichs? Friedrichs, yes. McKenna? McKenna, yes. Merkel? Merkel, yes. We stand adjourned at 8.15 p.m., and I'll see everybody in two weeks. Good night, everybody. Peace, everybody. Good, Good luck. Okay.